our next speaker is going to be highlighting uh, the different skills or the traits rather that a venture capitalist is looking for in a startup or a young entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rabil Varaich. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Very heartening to see this group of people come joining us for to one every year growing and growing. And um, a lot of things change as ecosystems mature. And I think one of the things that we're looking to do increasingly is also just share some of those learnings. And uh, one of the key things that many panelists, speakers earlier mentioned were some of the traits and skills and characteristics that make like a successful entrepreneur, which in turn leads to becoming, uh, making a successful business. So I just wanted to touch upon some of those things. And I just want to, before I get getting started, just preface that a little bit by, this is just our kind of like, you know, uh, view of some of the, and based on the experience of interacting with founders, um, what we've come across. So it's by no way an exhaustive list, and it's not meant to be um, a checklist of sort that unless you check every single box in this, you won't get investment. But what is interesting um, is actually like, you know, based on experience of interacting with about 500 plus founders, majority of these have been Pakistani. Um, there's certain characteristics or traits that you do come across. And if you look at some of those businesses a few years later, um, it's not exactly a coincidence that some of those businesses have been successful. It's uh, primarily driven by the entrepreneurs. Um, and just to kind of walk you through how a VC, um, or at least how we make a decision, these are some of the primary considerations we would have. So factors such as personality or ex experience of the entrepreneur, um, the actual product of service that is uh, being built, um, certain market characteristics, and of course, like financial characteristics, because we ourselves have to provide returns to our investors. But if I was to say, of all of these, the first role is really what matters the most. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, because a great entrepreneur can take uh, any idea, even a failing business, and make it into a huge success. The other way around, less so. You give a poor entrepreneur a great business and just watch it come down to zero. So that's why it's very, very crucial to just keep in context what is really ultimately going to make these businesses. It's the people, the young entrepreneurs in this room who are go hopefully going to make the next iconic Pakistani company. So what do I mean by ambition? This is almost a starting point if you want to attract external capital. This doesn't just encompass um, your own ability or like, you know, your own kind of like idea of like, you know, how big it could effectively be or your company can effectively be. This is almost a requirement, a base requirement to raise venture capital because we'll be expecting you to grow your business, not 10x, hopefully 100x. Um, and that only comes with ambition beyond um, a small scale, going thinking even beyond the niches, etc. Um, and really trying to not have ambition be the limiting factor, maybe your ability or circumstances be that. As they say, you aim for the stars and you might end up on the moon. So as a base level, we need ambition to start with. But then you need something to do about it. You can dream all you want, you can have big ambitions, you need to have some drive. Um, drive to get out of bed and do something, drive to face challenges, um, and uh, the journey of building a company, um, you need every step of the way this drive to stay with you. All well and good, you get drive, but a person by themselves cannot really build a business, so you need what we like to call charisma. Charisma to pull together a team, pull together resources, be able to retain them, and get the most out of them which ultimately is what's going to help you build that business. Now, you've pulled the team together, you have great resources. What's next? This is the number one factor in Pakistan especially. You're going to be faced with challenges, you're going to be faced with hurdles. Some of the people that you hired with your charisma might not be happy, so you will have to just deal with them. Um, but at the same time, always focus on building a successful business. Perhaps the best example of grit I can give is someone sitting in this room, uh, Munib, who's uh, by Kia's founder. Um, and the example I want to give here of like, you know, grit is there was a big period in between when 
with the likes of Kareem and Uber going heavy in this kind of like bike segment, um, the company should have floundered. It should not have existed. But the single factor that I think kept the company afloat and now uh, hopefully a thriving business, which is growing very fast, was grit. And that was from the founders, from the leadership that was there, um, that continued to work with the, all the challenges that they were presented with, but still came out on the other side looking good. And now, obviously, the prospects have completely changed. So you get grit, and you have to face multiple decisions on a daily basis. Um, Great is good, you can persevere, but actually being able to take those decisions and being decisive in whichever direction you want to go, be it in terms of the focus of your product or service, be it in terms of hiring people, laying off people, every single day, founders have to face these decisions. And the more decisive you are, the better place you are to deal with challenges and to continue to build your business. So you've decided on different things, in all of those decisions, an important aspect is empathy. Empathy of various stakeholders, any product or service that you're building is ultimately being paid for by a customer or consumer, you need to have empathy for them. But even before you have empathy for them, you need to have empathy for your own partners, your own team. Again, to just quote by Kia's example, driver empathy or partner empathy is a huge factor because if the supply of those drivers was not there, we wouldn't have a product or service that consumers would be able to use. So recognizing and building empathy in yourself is a very, very important factor in just understanding and evolving yourself as the startup journey evolves too. So you're all empathetic and you've been able to build that. I think the last and perhaps the most important aspect is humility. There's no absolute scale. It's all relative in, in our conversations and our interactions. But the reason why humility is important is because it suggests coachability. Um, we, on our side, will start off most of our conversations by recognizing what we don't know. Um, the starting point is we are not the entrepreneurs who are going to build your companies. You will build them. But are you already intellectually so arrogant that you cannot learn anything more? Or have you already achieved it? Um, and if you have, then you probably don't need us. Um, but if you do need partners, if you do need people beyond capital to provide you with the kind of support and value add that you will be looking for, I think having that humility is a very, very important aspect of it. So all of these traits are great. Again, like I said at the beginning, there's no like, absolute scale. There's no like, checklist that everyone needs to um, check every single box that is here. But how do we make sense of this, right? Like um, one person is more humble, but like, you know, um, less ambitious. Does that weigh more than um, a more ambitious person who's not very humble? Um, the reality is it's uh, a little bit more complicated than that. And this is how we bring it together. Um, this is something which we have started using uh, more recently for our portfolio companies and also for some of the investee companies. It's, uh, it's called the Game Changer Index. And what it does is it, fix up on some of those personality traits, some of those skills that, or some of those words that I shared earlier, and tries to identify if there are any common kind of themes or traits or, uh, uh, tied to the individuals that are making up a founding team or even the more broad team of a startup. And again, the explanations are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, um, every company essentially needs all of these, um, and they come in different mixes. So what we do is we go uh, have our portfolio companies go through this and come up with what are actually these team graphs. And the idea is really to identify where there might be some particular areas of strength and where there might be particular areas of weakness. So that could be supplemented. These two graphs are actually of two of our portfolio companies. And the point I wanted to make what this was, look at the mix of these two teams. One is filled with playmakers um, at the center. That's the purple 56% on the right. But the other team is actually full of game changers, um, which have a lot of imagination, creativity, but very few people who are translating that obsession into some sort of an actionable items or the work of a strategist. But the common theme in both of these is uh, we invested in both of them. Um, and uh, companies are doing well, but 
what it did do was it identified where there might be particular weaknesses. And when you're going out to hire new people, when you're looking to supplement your teams, the idea is to be aware of those gaps and try to supplement them, rather than try to get rid of people that might have particular strengths in an area, just to try to average it out or bring it all together in terms of um, the playmaker makes or any particular kind of like strategy. So it's a short talk, but the idea was that there is no perfect mix. Um, there's all sorts of entrepreneurs that defy logic, that defy the odds, and achieve success. And if you are overweighted in any of those traits that I mentioned earlier, you still will have a very good shot at uh, building a successful company. But the more you are aware of your own strengths and weaknesses, or as we call it in one um, this fellowship that I'm part of, um, every individual has their own zone of genius, a zone of weakness, or, and, and zone of like excellence. The idea is not to try to just improve your areas of weakness so that the overall average comes out a little bit better. The idea is actually to be aware of your zone of weakness, but work on your zone of genius so that you can actually add a lot more value than just by averaging everything out. Thank you very much for it. Um, there's actually a small announcement that uh, we wanted to share with uh, everyone, and uh, this is a function of the growth of the ecosystem and uh, the fact that over the last few years we've seen um, a plethora of new funds, um, angel investors come up uh, to like you know participate in this ecosystem, and we think. We think it's also time now to start professionalizing the space. Some of the challenges that were mentioned in the panel earlier about what exactly is venture capital, how does it fit in, how do funds work, um, what kind of um, expectations venture capitalists have. And uh, we wanted to actually initiate the creation of uh, the Venture Capital Association of Pakistan. And um, for that, we have a very simple um, objective. Uh, VCAP is essentially just an association which will uh, be a little bit of a representative body for the venture capitalists that are investing in Pakistan. Um, don't necessarily need to be incorporated here. Um, but the idea is really to try to cover the things that are mentioned here, uh, which is provide a forum to facilitate knowledge sharing. Um, we talk about um, a lot of experiences individually, but we haven't really be, had a chance to be able to kind of share those with the broader ecosystem. So that would be a key objective of it. The next one, which is um, advocacy for improvements in the regulatory framework, very much needed in the ecosystem. Uh, every investor that has gone through even a single investment would realize that there's a lot of room for improvement in this space. So we think that's going to be a key part of this venture capital association. Then, of course, uh, wanting to collect and publish data. Um, as an industry, we are far behind in terms of both collection, um, aggregation, and dissemination of um, data, which I think can just be facilitated by having um, this association uh, be a touch point for venture capitalists and founders and other stakeholders in the ecosystem. And lastly, of course, uh, organize industry events and workshops, not to suggest that O21 will not be continuing. This is just uh, with an idea of having like focus pieces um, uh, where thought leaders can be brought to the country or f the ones that are already in the country can come out and share their thoughts and hopefully b help us learn as venture capitalists, but also uh, provide some guidance to entrepreneurs that are looking to understand this space so that they can approach every venture capitalist in a better way. Um, so these are going to be our simple objectives. Um, and the founding members of the Venture Capital Association um, are displayed up here. I want to name all of them and uh, individuals um, who are all, I think, all represented here, probably with the exception of Kingsway. Um, so I myself am uh, Rabil, I cover, like, lead, together with Bernard Lead Sarmarkar. Uh, we have Taros, who is represented by Jonas, who was on the panel earlier. Um, I2I Ventures, Mispa and Kulsum, they're here, go and talk to them. Uh, Gobi and Fatma, we don't have a combined logo of theirs yet, so. Both of them are on, uh, like part of the founding committee. And then, of course, we have um, within the VC space, we have pure play VCs such as 47 Ventures, uh, Caravan, Indus Valley Capital, uh, Atif, who you'll be hearing from tomorrow. Um, and of course, LIVC, uh, the Laxon Investments Venture Capital arm. But we are also looking to um, offer representation um, uh, to angel investors because we understand that given the pre-seed and seed stage uh, uh, focus in the 
last few years, there are some uh, angel investors that have emerged from within the space. And we want this body to effectively represent not just um, a particular class of venture capitalists, um, actually span across the entire spectrum. Um, so representing effectively angels with Magnus Communications, I'm sure if he's there, and um, Crest Ventures, Humayun, I'm not sure if he's present here, but um, has been a very active investor in the Pakistani space. And last but not least, also corporate VC, um, which I, LIVC is not one of, uh, but TPLE Ventures, represented by Ali Samir here, is also there. So these 12 uh, members, and of course, sorry, Kingsway Capital, who are based out of London, um, but have invested in the Pakistani venture space uh, with some success in the past, are also part of the founding team. So just an announcement to share that this is something which will get created and firmed up over the next couple of months. Um, if there are entities or individuals who feel that they would be a good fit for becoming part of this association, please reach out to us. Uh, very happy to make this as inclusive as possible. But the idea really is that now, Time for talk is over. I think we need to start professionalizing the space. We need to give founders and uh, like you know the opportunity that they deserve, and uh, also be fair in both creating opportunities for them and hopefully generating returns for ourselves and our investors. Thank you very much.